Sorry, I gotta get on the couch here. Welcome to Talking Movies. Uh, we're on the couch today, getting cozy. Just Swank, Swank, and Blake. Hey. And Sonny, and Butch is back here somewhere. Anyway, we're talking about underrated actors part two today. Um, I want to again remind you to check out our our buddy Jamie's uh, project that's going on at Boondies, March 24th, I believe, March 23rd. Mm, 24th. The 24th, the four-play movie they're going to be putting on to benefit uh, the Center for Equality and here in Sioux Falls. So please be sure and check that out. It's a good cause. Underrated actors. Oh, let's start with what you saw last. What did you see last, Blake? Um, I'll be honest. I haven't really seen a movie that's worth talking about. Um, I saw. Th I actually only seen three movies. I'm pretty disappointed in myself. Um, the first movie I watched was this uh, newish horror movie coming out or is out called Come Out and Play. Um, and it's about this uh, couple. Um, one of them's American because it's Vanessa Shaw who is kind of been in some stuff. She was in, um, well, she was in Ladybugs from way back in the mid '90s with Rodney Dangerfield. Um, she's also in that. She's also in that uh, James Mangold movie uh, with Joaquin Phoenix, where he uh, is t tormenting two women. Um, two but, lovers. Two lovers. Yeah. Um, she's in that. Um, she's one of my crushes for life. I think. Um, but it's about this couple uh, who are in. I, I believe it's in the uh, the Caribbean, one of the Caribbean islands, and. Um, she's pregnant, and he they go they, they they take a boat from their island to another island, and when they get to this other island, they realize that there are no adults on the island, um, only children playing, and soon they find out that these kids have been. Well, actually, I don't know really what happens with the kids. They 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 just end up they they kill every adult they see. It's Lord of the Flies. Kind of. I, I mean, I don't know. I've never read the book or seen the movie, but um, they basically kill every adult that's there. Um, Sounds kind of cool. It's 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 a great. It's, it's, there. it's very well made. Um, <laughs> there's something I was like, okay, this better not happen, and then it does, and I was kind of like laughing because it's really really dumb. Um, so I would recommend the first like hour and fifteen <laughs> minutes of it, and then you can shut up after that. Um, but it, it's it's okay. Um, I don't know. I'm, I'm really stuck on it. Um, and then I also watched a documentary called Side by Side. Yeah, that's what I watched too. Um, which, uh, well, I don't know, it was alright. It was about how digital is coming into filmmaking and kind of kicking out film. And uh, you, know, you have your you have your people who love it and people who hate it. And they're both pretty passionate on both sides. But um, I thought it was great to see both sides. Uh, yeah, yeah. Because, I mean, I agree with... I feel like I agree a lot with both uh, with both well, yeah. sides about it, it. What I found was like it's hard to argue with with how uh, you can just take a digital camera. It's pretty much ready to set up, and you can light it a lot faster than film and sh knock your movie out. And mm -hmm. I, I kind of like that idea of versus taking hours to set up a shot. But I mean that is the process sometimes. But well, that's exactly what we're doing here. Yeah, we're talking into yeah. an iPad. Yeah. I hit the button and we get ready to go. Yep. It was it was it was, it was interesting. I, I kind of. I don't know, I, I kind of laughed at the beginning when I saw that Keanu Reeves was actually interviewing people. Um, and I thought he was actually more animated than he's ever been in any movie interviewing these people. Um, <clears throat> but, yeah, it was, it was a fun movie. Uh, if you're into the filmmaking process, it's one to check out. A lot of great filmmakers are interviewed in that. A lot of them. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, if you're interested in film at all, I feel yeah. like you should check it out. Um, uh, what else did you watch? Um, the last movie I watched, which I, I absolutely hated, was uh, National Security with, uh, <laughs> with Martin uh, Lawrence, Martin Lawrence oh. and Steve Zahn. Um, well, yeah, I there, go. There you have it. I, 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 <laughs> see you later. Um, no, I, I was bored one Friday night and compared um, to Blue Streak, it's I didn't see Blue Streak. <laughs> um, judging this, I'm, I'm not going to touch Blue Streak. You probably like Blue Streak better. Actually. I think this was like one of the most racist movies I've ever seen in my life. It. it, it, it I mean, I've never seen so much hatred towards white people in my life in a movie. It was terrible. Um, but, uh, terrible, terrible movie. I, I hated it so much. I don't even know why I stopped it and finished it, but I did. I have this law I have to abide by that I have to finish every movie I watch. Um, Is there a certain minute mark? Like, 
46 minutes in, you're there. Yeah. I actually stopped it with like 15 minutes to go because oh, I, okay. I had to go to bed and I'm old. But I wouldn't recommend it. And, and unfortunately, that's the only three movies I watched in the past week since uh, since our last show. I've been pretty bad, a pretty bad movie fan. So. Oh well. So um, what did you watch? Well, like I said, I watched Side by Side as did Blake. Um, I thought it was pretty interesting. <laughs> Um, you know, hearing from all these old timers that just grew up shooting on yeah. film, and then um, they interview, you know, like Lena Dunham, who basically wouldn't have a career without the digital yeah. age. Which, well, I think she even said that she, she does she, say that. Yeah, she's like she couldn't make a film, or someone told her that she could make a film, and then she got a digital camera, and I mean, she's got the Criterion Collection now, basically, right? I mean, yeah, and I mean how you can you, like you can just let the camera roll for whatever sixty minutes or however much you have, and you can you don't have to you don't have to cut you don't have to yep. you can just tell your actors exactly what to do without having to reload and all this other stuff. Yep. Uh, they got into the argument about how um, some people aren't taking it as seriously because you're not. Uh, you don't have that, like, well, we have to set this up and you only have this much time to get something accomplished. I guess I can... That's, that, ma that makes a good point, but I don't really think that they're not taking it as serious mm -hmm. by any means, but I thought that was interesting that they brought that up. But, yeah, I, I would recommend that. Um, we finished Game of Thrones Season 2 um, just in don't time for me. Season... Just in time for Season 3, which starts on March 30th, but I don't know that's if I'm, I'm not going to be able to be able to watch that for a while, but, uh, I don't know, I, I liked it, I like that show, it's just as, uh, it was just as good as the first season, and, uh, Blake told me that one of the episodes, which I don't know if you've gotten to yet, was one of the most expensive the episodes, the most expensive episode in TV history, in TV history. Yeah. <laughs> which is, it's funny you said that, because my wife said the other night when we were watching an episode, she's like, I wonder how much it costs to make this show, there's so much that goes into it, yeah, which wait, is wait, weird, wait till you to one of the episodes, yeah, the, yeah, the second to last episode is the most expensive okay. episode. Which, I mean, it's, it's weird because didn't, you know, you hear about Deadwood about going over budget and and uh, budget issues with HBO and television and stuff like that, but they have all these shows like Boardwalk Empire and Game of Thrones, which can't be that cheap to make anymore, but, well, that's, that's another show. <laughs> uh, so yeah, Game of Thrones and Side by Side. Cool. Yeah, I, I'm about... Seven episodes into the second season of Game of Thrones. I actually like this one better than the first season. I do too, actually. I think it's just um, more. I don't know. It, it moves a little bit better. I think the first, and I think well, the, and I think you know, probably about episode three or four, I started remember finally remembering people's names mm -hmm. again, and so. Yeah, I think what works for me is like I was the reason why I like season two more is because uh, season one was kind of hard to get into with, all the, with especially with me with the character names and stuff. It's season two is a little easier to follow because. Uh, um, I'm used to the rhythm of the show mm -hmm. and yeah. everything, so I, I do enjoy season two a lot more than season one. Yeah, we plowed through that season in yeah. less than a week, so yeah. yeah, it was much easier to watch than that first one. When season three comes out on DVD, there should be a book in there with everybody's face and their name. There's actually a thing online that has the whole like tree of everyone. It should, be, a, it should be in a book. <laughs> it should be in a book form so I can hold it when I'm watching it, though. <laughs> anyway, we'll watch with subtitles. We wa we watch a lot of them with subtitles. Oh, we always watch the subtitles. Yeah, oh, right. that that helped a little bit. Yeah, too. definitely. I never thought about that. <clears throat> well, I finally watched another movie that was nominated, actually the winner of the Oscar, Argo. Um, I was very impressed with it. Um, I, I think right after the opening credits were done, I was already impressed with it. I love the kind of the imagery and kind of the back history they told and stuff right away with the storyboards and stuff. Um, I thought it was really, really good. Um, I'm going to give it a B plus because I thought it just, I, I thought the end, though it was very intense, I think it was just so unbelievable. Um, it's a movie. Yeah, I know, I know, but it's based on a true story and I think they maybe took a little bit too much embellishments with it. Um, um, my sister-in-law, being the, the conspiracy theorist, that's not the right word for it, but anyway, actually checked up on it and there was apparently no... Like, they got through customs at the airport with a little bit of nervousness, and then that was it. They got on the plane. So there's obviously no cop, cop cars on the runway type of thing. I just, right after, immediately after the movie, I just had so many questions. Just like, you know, with like the airplane tickets and stuff. And 
It was great how it done. I mean, it was amazing, an amazing movie. I was certainly gripped to the screen the entire time, which I can't remember the last time I said that about a movie. Um, I paused it to go to the bathroom at one point. I usually don't do that. I'm usually just like, ah, oh, whatever, you know. I didn't, I didn't want to miss anything. Um, I thought Affleck did a, did a great job. Everybody did a good job. Yeah. Um, I, I guess I don't know if it was, I guess I haven't seen all the movies this year. I just don't know if it was the best movie of the year. I don't know. Might have been. It was the most loved, I think. Yeah. And it's interesting to me that... I wonder how how much politics actually goes into those nominations. Because, yes, it did win Movie of the Year, but, you know, why didn't it... Why didn't it get more... No it almost seemed like they were trying to keep it from winning more awards. I guess that was my... That was my feeling, I guess. I don't know. But, yeah, I thought it was... I thought it was very good. It, it doesn't show... America in the best light in certain aspects of it, which could be detrimental, I guess, to its <laughs> to its overall uh, overall award winning appeal. But um, I don't know. I thought it, I thought it was very good, and I'm very very glad to watch it. I you know I kind of I knew I, I knew I wanted to watch it, but I wasn't really at like oh, I need to watch this, need to watch this, and mm -hmm. then I just sat down and watched it the other night, and was it's very very impressed. So Argo, check it out if you haven't seen it. Um, you might have heard of it. You might have heard of it. Ben Affleck's masterpiece, I guess we'll say. So, so far. So yeah. far, yeah. Um, yeah. So, let's go to underrated actors. Blake? No, let's have Spencer start it up. This okay. Time. No, I started that last time. You started that last time? All right. I'm going to go with uh, an oldie. Actually, you got the one. longest list. I, well, I shortened it. Oh, um, good. Okay. Who'd you cut off? Oh, Just God. give us one name you cut off. Um, David Morse. Oh, no, he's on my list. I thought it was going to be... Richard Dean Anderson. Shoot, no, Sorry. I, yeah. I don't know. <laughs> one of my, uh, one of the guys, uh, mine has died over, uh, actually over 30 years ago. Um, He's on my list too, but I'm sure. His name was Warren Oates. Oh, no. Um, people are probably the most known from, as the drill sergeant from Stripes. Um, mm. He's been in all kinds of other stuff. Um, one of my favorite roles he was in was called uh, Bring Me the Head of Alfredo Garcia, <laughs> where he plays this alcoholic... Uh, I, you know, I haven't seen him for so long, but I think he's like a foreign military guy or, or a special agent. And he, he's down in Mexico, and he gets hired by this, uh, this like mafia, this Mexican mafia, to find this guy Alfredo Garcia and bring his head back to him. Um, and it's like this, it's just this this guy in Mexico, and he's like he's an alcoholic, and he's having just the worst time, and it's just this, this really ugly movie. But he's so good in it. Um, uh, I think he's one of my, one of my, fa my dad's favorites. Um, he's also in The Wild Bunch. I don't know if you've seen The Wild Bunch by uh, Sam Peckinpah, considered one of the best westerns ever made. Um, Blue Thunder with... Have you ever seen Blue Thunder or anything like that? No, Blue, no, Blue no, Thunder no. Is, is this like 80s movie in L.A. where they, they invent some special awesome helicopter to, to fight crime and um, he plays one of the, <laughs> the police in that. Um, it turns on So my first choice is Warren Oates, cool. who unfortunately is not with us anymore. But. Well, I'll go with David Morse then. He is that, you totally would recognize him. Uh, he's always, he's never like, well I guess he was the main bad guy in 16 Blocks with Bruce Willis and Most Def. Oh my gosh, what a terrible movie. Yeah, terrible movie. <laughs> but that guy, he's always, I don't know, I've always kind of liked that guy. He's like, uh, he's always the henchman though, it seems like... Uh, He's right under Ed Harris in The Rock. Um, oh, yeah. He shows up in The Green Mile. Is um, he Shawshank or not? I don't think he's in Shawshank. I always liked him in 12 Monkeys. 12 Monkeys and The Negotiator. He was in the, in the, the movie The Negotiator. I have an actor in that movie too, actually. Uh, he's in The Hurt Locker for a little bit too. Oh, that's right. He's the, he's the, the wild man. The wild man. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and he was in that uh, TV miniseries... Um, Stephen King's The Langoliers. He was one of the main guys. He was. He's also he's a, one of the pilots, wasn't he? Yeah. He uh, he did a, he did a, a movie in the early '90s um, that actually Sean Penn directed. I'm trying to think of what it was. Was it The Indian Runner, where he, it was him and Jack Nicholson? Um, Jack Nicholson, like basically, uh, plays this alcoholic jewel jewel seller whose son is. Ran over, um, 
Mur- uh, killed by a drunk driver, and the drunk driver is David Morris. I can't remember the name of the movie. Is it Crossing Guard? That's what it is. Oh, that movie's sweet. That's, that, that's, he, he's really good in that movie. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, and if you're wondering who all these people are, we're going to put uh, their names on the bottom. So we can, we can. I will do that. IMDb links. <laughs> yeah. Uh, funny you mentioned Chris Penn. I'm gonna segue, or excuse me, Dwight, Sean Penn. I'm gonna segue in that into Chris Penn, <laughs> another guy who's now left this earth. Um, I, I don't know if I've ever seen him in a movie where I've just been disappointed. I think I can say that for a lot of, a lot of actors that I like. You know, I feel like sometimes they don't necessarily bring their their A game. But I, you know, Chris Penn. I don't think he ever really had any lead roles, but everything. Everything I think I've ever seen him in, he was, he was phenomenal. Um, unfortunately, Footloose is the only thing that comes to mind. Beethoven but, second. <laughs> but, Reservoir uh, Dogs. Yeah, Reservoir Dogs is another good one. But, I mean, even in Footloose, how could you not love that guy? You know, it just, that is good, man. Rush yeah. Hour. <laughs> Cookie Romano. I see, I so like, seen those. Like, like you said, I mean, not the greatest movies. Not the but greatest he delivers movies. every time. Yeah. But he's just one of those guys, when you see his face, you kind of feel, oh, sure. yeah. I think that's based on my entire list, kind mm-hmm. of. But. Um, another guy, it's kind of a kind of a crossover, um, and you guys can laugh at me if you want, but Dwight Yoakam, I think every time I've seen him in a movie, besides the movie he made, do not watch that one. What's the movie South he made? South of Heaven, West of Hell. Oh. That movie is terrible. Good mm. soundtrack, though, if you like Dwight Yoakam. Is it just him that, on the soundtrack? <laughs> it's, yeah, mostly. Of course it is, because he's not a very nice person. I but like, anyway. I liked him in Sling Blade. Um, Sling Blade. Um, the Newton Boys, he's really good in that movie. Um, he's terrifying in Panic Room. I was going to say Panic Room. Panic, Panic Room. Panic Room. Um, terrifying. Three Burials of Melchiatus Estrada. It's got a small role. It's kind of a Which big... Which actually was influenced... It's, it's kind of like a sister film to... <coughs> we're going to have a photograph. So that's what it's I, the same, that reminded me of. That's what I thought it's about. It's the same idea, basically. So, yeah. Yeah. Uh, Dwight plays kind of like a bigot cop in that movie, and I mean, obviously, it's not so good to say he's really good at that, but he obviously is a believable in the role. Um, so, yeah, I think any you know, an underrated actor can just be somebody who takes on a role, even you know, totally off their persona, and just really, just really makes you mad, you know, just or mm-hmm. if they even if they're a villain and you hate them, that's that's that means they're doing their job as an actor. He is also one of the villains in. And I will, I'll call this an underrated film, Hollywood Homicide. He shows up as one of the bad guys in that movie. Harrison Ford and Josh Hartnett. Directed and written by Ron Shelton. You're alone in that one. <laughs> I like that movie. <laughs> what else you got um, for us, Blake? One of my, one of the guys that I was always kind of like, one of, the, one of the guys who I was truly like terrified watching as a kid, who I thought like was like a very, very good at being evil, was J.T. Walsh. Um, I, another guy who unfortunately has, has died years ago, man, that guy was so good at, I mean, I actually took his IMDb page out last night, I didn't realize how many little, how little films he actually did, um, but some of his, um, he's fantastic at Breakdown, um, he's, he's like the lead villain in Breakdown, yeah, he's great in Slim Blade, uh, Red Rock West, which is a very, very underrated Nicolas Cage movie that everyone should check out if you love Nicolas Cage. Um, a few good men, Hoffa, House of Games. I mean, that guy. He is in House. He's of in Pleasantville too. I, th- I think he's in Pleasantville. Um, kind Grifters. Of, I've got the Grifters right now. Yeah, he is. He he terrified me. He was so good at being bad. Um, he's in Backdraft. Backdraft and the Client. Yeah, he is, he's a phenomenal actor. And actually, um, when Jack Nicholson won Best Actor. For as good as it gets, he personally said something to the effect of that J.T. Walsh made me a better actor. So I don't know if you get higher praise than, than that. After that was after wow. that was after he died too. He, right. died, he died a good month before that. That was Oscar uh, Heart attack. Yeah, I think he had a heart attack. Yeah. But that's that's another thing. I, I love J.T. Walsh. Um, I wrote down Tom Newton. Newton. I have Tom Newton. I written down too. Yeah. He, uh, another guy who just creeps the, creeps the hell out of me whenever I see him, no matter what he's in. Um, the House of the Devil, which is a movie that everyone should check out if you have not. It just came out, uh, what, a couple years ago, 2009, 2010 yeah, or something like that. Um, he also is the villain in Manhunter, 
that first movie with uh, where uh, Hannibal Lecter shows up, played by um, Brian Cox. Brian Cox, yeah. You know. um, last action hero I wrote down, he's in that movie. Uh, another couple movies he shows up uh, in The Heat and uh, Synecdoche, Synecdoche, New York. Um, yeah, but once again, we'll have a link to all these people. So you know what we're talking yeah. about. He did a movie that I, I think is pretty underrated, which is uh, The Pledge, also directed by Sean Penn. And with Jack Nicholson. Yep. Yeah. yeah. I think that was, that was severely overlooked when it came out. I forgot that he was in that movie. Yeah. I have Robocop 2. He's in Robocop 2 as well. He's one of the bad guys. Actually, I think he plays the villain who gets kind of turned into a machine near the end. Oh, man. Um, I gotta watch that movie again. I don't think you have to. It's... <laughs> anyway. Yeah, everything you listed I have written down for his movies. So. Great. Awesome cool. character actor. Who kind of, he's also, he also did an episode of Louie where she is phenomenal and where he plays this preacher who comes in and, and tells kids what it's like to to suffer for, for uh, your sins. Oh my, you have to check it out. It's <laughs> That's so, gonna be off the one of the later seasons. It's so, it's season two, I think. Season two, okay. It's so funny. I'm gonna shift a little bit across the ocean to a British actor named Matt Lucas. Um, if you don't know who he is, the movie that you've probably seen him in is, um, yes, I'm generalizing, um, uh, it's Bridesmaids. He's the bald roommate of Kristen Wiig in the beginning. Um, he is, he's done a few different things here and there, not a whole bunch of stuff in the U.S. He did a, a newer adaptation of Wind of the Willows. He also has his own show with another guy named Matt, Matt Williams. Um, called Little Britain, where it's basically like a skit show, like a like an SNL, or um, what's the Canadian one? Kids in the Hall. Yeah. It's, it's a lot like that, where they just do all these different characters, and watching that, you, you see just how versatile he is, and he's really believable in all those roles. Um, Matt Williams is really good, too, but Matt Lucas is really, is really just a, a star, and I, I wish he would get some more accolades uh, universally, because I think he's... A very good actor. Have you seen Come Fly With Me? Mm -hmm. This is another British show. No, I oh, haven't. It's so funny. Come they, he basically, he, they, it's basically like it takes place in an airport, mm -hmm. and they play like a main character in each mm -hmm. scene, whether it's a woman or a guy, and it's, it's hilarious. <laughs> Do not watch the Little Britain HBO series though, because HBO just kind of smeared everything they they had going on. They kind of just went weirdly. Sexual, like HBO always does with that show, but the British Little Britain <laughs> is very good. The British always get it right the first time. Yes, yes they do. Um, I'm gonna also throw a name out there, and I and this might be somewhat controversial because he's a well-known actor, but I think he should have won a lot more awards. And I, now that I think about it, I think he maybe did win an Oscar. I could be wrong though. But Ed Harris. This is a guy that I love. I watch. I'll watch a terrible movie just because he's in it. He's milk good. money. He's um. good. Oh, milk money. That's a great movie. <laughs> um, but he's not one. He's not one an Oscar. Uh, okay. He was nominated for Pollock, wasn't he? A few different ones. Yeah. I think he was also nominated for the Hours. No, he wasn't. For best supporting. I could be wrong. But anyway, I just think there are so many movies where I'm just totally captivated by him. Pollock is, is a phenomenal one. Um, I just had it in my tongue. There's a, there's a smaller movie called The Third Miracle, where he plays a priest investigating, like, so-called miracles. Yeah. And uh, it's, yeah, it's, it's really good, and he's kind of like the only one of the conclave, so to speak, that believes that, you know, that these aren't actually miracles, and he just hmm. fights for it. But anyway... That's my Ed Harris spiel. You should, um, we, everyone should all YouTube or just get the Rock Criterion Collection <laughs> because one of the bonus features on that is him, uh, like outtakes of him just getting completely pissed off at, at <laughs> crew members and, and like himself especially too, just, uh, like flubbing a couple takes lines. It very seriously. Yeah. yeah, it's, it's, it's seven minutes of uncomfortable Ed Harris. <laughs> So you should check it out. It's probably on YouTube. Uh, just Ed Harris, The Rock, special feature gag reel. <laughs> it's it's really uncomfortable. It is. And kind of funny at the same time. Yeah. Cool. 
but like I'd hate to I would have hated to be a crew member just like wow this guy <laughs> he's gonna go crazy he's gonna go insane and kill us all <clears throat> Blake what else you got for us um I got a few I'm trying to think of which one I really want to promote um God, I'm stuck uh I'm gonna go with uh M. Emmett Walsh who uh he, uh, I don't know if, uh, you know who I'm talking about right then. He, um, he's, 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 he's kind of a, uh, it was a Coen Brothers staple. Uh, he was in, he was the detective in, uh, not the detective, a private detective in, uh, Blood Simple. He was the guy who hires Bruce, uh, Bruce Willis, Harrison Ford in Blade Runner. He's an older guy, kind of a stockier guy, really with a yeah. big southern drawl. Um, he's like the main bad guy in Blood Simple, right? Kind of. He kind of no. Mm. He kind of he kind of he convolutes the plot more. Like he uh, like you know this guy's out for this person, but he gets in the he gets in the way, and then kind of makes everything more more murkier for everyone. I'm pretty sure. Um, he's also the, he's the guy in the jerk who's who's trying to shoot Bruce Willis. Or I'm Bruce Willis. <laughs> Trying to shoot Steve Martin. Bruce Somebody Willis. watched Diary. Bruce, Bruce, Bruce Willis, Willis is a jerk. <laughs> no, um, he's trying to shoot Steve Martin, and he keeps hitting the cans. Oh yeah. That's that's you know, he's in he's in back of school. Um, he's, I don't know. It's 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 so hard to do this without having a picture, but uh, sure. wow, Rodney Danger. He uh, he uh, he's good, man. He shows up in all these movies, and he's so good at what he does. I'm embarrassed now because I can't name any of the movies he's in, but. Swank. I'm gonna butcher his last name, uh, John Cazal. Cazali. Uh, Cazal, I think. Cazal. He is no longer with us, and <clears throat> he was taken way too short because every one of his movies that he was he was in was nominated for Best Picture, I believe. All five, I think. Uh, Godfather one and two, Dog Day Afternoon, uh, The Conversation, and uh, Deer Hunter. Jeez. But man, that enough. that guy would have. I mean, he was. That guy would have gone on to do. Lots of great things. He would have won awards, I think. Uh, That's about it. Who is he in the Godfather movies? He's uh, Fredo. Okay. Okay. I I, I love him in uh, Dog Day. I think he's phenomenal in that. I I haven't seen the conversation in forever, so I forget who he is in that. But um, he's so good in Dog Day Afternoon. I think he. I'm I'm pretty sure he's Gene Hackman's like uh, right hand man. Yeah, that's a good movie. That's that's an underrated movie, if you ask me. Um, I got a couple names, and they're kind of different ends of the spectrum. And this might be a little more controversy too, but um, Justin Long. I've seen <laughs> I've seen <coughs> he's one of those guys that's kind of a now guy, and I've seen him. He pops up in so many different movies, and I always just enjoy him, even you know, even if when he's playing the jerk, kind of it's kind of fallen off the map recently, but uh, you know. Um, what's that? Accepted? That's a good, kind of a teeny bopper movie, but he's still pretty funny in that. Um, The Waiting, he's just not that into you. I watched that the other night again. He's he's kind of a jerk, he's a jerk, he's the jerk bartender in that that's stringing Jenna Goodwin along. Um, Jeepers Creepers. (laughs) I haven't seen that, but uh. It's like one of the first movies he was in. Uh, he's also in Dodgeball. One of his well, that was kind of one of his big first big movies. Die Hard Four. Oh yeah. Die Hard Four. Yes. He's probably the best part in Die Hard Four. Really, I thought he was. Well, <laughs> that's how terrible that movie is. Justin Long is the best part in it. <laughs> it is terrible, man. Um, and then I also uh, another guy that's kind of kind of famous, and so I'm maybe not seeing them guidelines here, but. I just don't think he's got enough uh, accolades for what he's done as Toby Jones. Um, just a weird little fella. <laughs> Looks like I think he's British too. But um, yeah, I mean, he was phenomenal in that. Um, oh, geez, I, I just forgot the name of it. He did a movie where he played Capote that came shortly out, out shortly oh. after Capote. Um, What's that called? Yeah, I can't remember now. But uh, he's very good as Truman Capote. Um, He's a guy that hasn't been in a lot of starring roles. He, he, did a, he did a movie last year called Barbarian Sound Studio, which he was really, really good in. Um, he plays a sound he plays a sound editor 
from from Britain who gets sent to Italy to work to work on sound for a movie, and like you know, he's that guy who's sitting like with a knife chopping lettuce to get the sound effect of you know a bone getting chopped off or or whatever. Yeah. But it was really interesting. It was really good. Like it was his movie. He's he's in pretty much every shot of the movie. And it's about about a guy whose whose sanity completely goes out the window as he's in Italy. The only person that speaks English. Um, if you love seventies horror, Italian horror movies like I do, like, you can kind of appreciate. Huh. Yeah, I'm gonna have to, I think you gave me that one to check. Yeah, out. It's, it's 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 really it's really good. I like. Well, no, I actually didn't like it, but it's it's done really well. It's another movie that kind of loses its way at the end, but um, he's he's very very good in it. So I'd recommend that one um, that he did. That's probably my favorite that he's done. But swank. Uh, I'll call this my last one because it's probably the most well known. Um, and I thought he was underrated for the longest time, and now he's got his own starring role on an HBO series called The Newsroom. Uh, Jeff Daniels. I always thought that Jeff Daniels was severely underrated, and like his bit parts in I don't know, like uh, The Lookout or um, yes, that movie or, is great. Most recently, in Looper, his his bit part of that. Yeah. He's he always he always brings his A game, and if you've not seen the newsroom on HBO, uh, check it out. It's, I mean, it's written by Aaron Sorkin, um, so the dialogue's real snappy and quick and witty, and he reads that dialogue extremely well, and and he's I I prefer him to Jim Carrey and Dumb and Dumber. So. I mean, <laughs> There you go. I really he did a movie he did a Woody Allen movie in the eighties called uh, The Purple Rose of Cairo, hmm. which was uh, he was very very good in that. Um, one of the one of his underrated and then of course uh, I love Arachnophobia, um, where he fights spiders. Stephen's, I would call that movie underrated. Underrated horror movie. Stephen King produced um, horror movie. Very good in that. Um, I just got a couple more names uh, and I just looked it up to that movie with Toby Jones about the body's called Infamous. Um, <clears throat> Michael Sheen, who I, who I fell in love with when I watched this really awkward movie, but very, very good movie called Dirty Filthy Love. Um, that's also starring Shirley Henderson, who I think Luke brought up last week. Um, he, he was in Frost Nixon. Mm. He, he now has gone on to Twilight and Underworld, but, uh, <laughs> um, so I think he's kind of lost his luster, but... You know, I think in the right role, I think um, I think he's he's certainly really really good at what he does. If you haven't seen that movie, Dirty Filthy Love, and you can handle something really weird and awkward like that, um, check it out. He's but, really funny uh, in Midnight in Paris. Yes, yes, yeah. So he's kind of a dick in that, isn't he? Yeah, but it's better than Head of the Vampire Clan. No, I agree. <laughs> I agree. He's a dick in the Twilight movies too. He's um, a dick. And another, I'm going to go across another ocean now, or a couple oceans in the sea. Um, Guy Pearce, Australian, yeah. correct? Okay. Um, oh, I didn't think of him. But, uh, he got on the map with uh, LA Confidential, I believe, and then he's kind of gone on to really good things. Yeah, um, I, didn't, I didn't think about him until Blake was talking about sound editing, and I thought about uh, one of my f favorite underrated movies is a little movie called Ravenous, where mm -hmm. he plays a... Mm -hmm. A soldier stuck in this uh, mountain retreat, mountain fort where unspeakable things happen. Bizarre but the movie. sound editing in that movie is phenomenal. Um, I just have to check that movie out. Oh, it's so good. The sound, the sound. You haven't seen that. Still uh, the not. soundtrack by that is done done by one of the guys from Blur, and it's Damon Albarn. It's, it's a really creepy soundtrack. Um, but uh, yeah, I just he's one of those guys. Um, Memento. I mean. Memento. The Proposition. I haven't seen The Proposition. He also did a movie in the early 90s, mid-90s, called um, The Adventures of Priscilla, Queen of the Desert, where he played the drag queen with uh, Hugo Weaving yes, from the I've Matrix series. Um, I've he, seen that. Yeah. He, he's awesome in that. Uh -huh. I think that was good in general, but he's such a smarmy little <laughs> a-hole in that movie. Um, his, uh, that was kind of like his big, big break that he had. Well, no, I shouldn't say that. LA Confidential was his big break, but that was kind of like got him noticed to get in LA Confidential. Mm -hmm. um, he does my best uh, impression of Andy Warhol, too, in Factory Girl. So many actors that play Andy Warhol, it seems like. But he's, yeah. <coughs> David Bowie. 
Yeah, anything that he's in, I, I, I really enjoy. And he's I don't know uh, about that movie, The Lookout, which is what Die Hard meets Blade Runner. But he Lockout. 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 What did yeah. I say? Lookout. Lockout. Lockout. That's a, not that's lockout. a good movie. Lockout was good. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sure he's really good. In that. He could. He, he's he kind of plays like a Snake Plissken role, but he. Yeah. Every 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 like line he has is some smart. Smart Alec re response and and you would recommend it. I I, I liked it. Cheesy yeah. action movie with yeah. Guy Pierce in the center. Exactly. Do not yeah. watch the movie Time Machine, however. Yeah. That movie. <laughs> yeah. Oh boy. Uh, I was really in a Guy Pierce uh, love affair. There. I was too. And that kind of that kind of turned me off, and that made me kind of that kind of took him out of the spotlight actually, because I think that movie is expected. To I be think quite it, well. I think it brought him down to earth a little yeah. bit. Like people were expecting him to be the next big star, and when that when that tanked. He kind of stuck with more reserve roles. He's also in the Hurt Locker too. Mm -hmm. um, so, uh, and a handsome man, just, just yeah. kind of a handsome, yeah. yeah also, yeah. check out that movie Animal Kingdom if you have not checked that out. Yeah, he is in it, isn't he? Yeah, he's great. I love Guy Pierce. Mm -hmm. I Guy thought. Pierce. I thought to end things here, we could do a little experiment, when we could maybe just shout out some actors that we really don't like. <laughs> Hate to put you guys in the spot. I'd have to think about it. Okay. Uh, Justin Long. <laughs> Justin Long. <laughs> Bill Pullman. We're not going to start that again. Um, I like Bill Pullman, by the way. Yeah. I know you I don't. don't. Um, oh, man. Who do I not like as an actor? It's hard. I don't like Joaquin Phoenix, but I, that's when well documented. Um, I had like five or six names in my head, and I can't even think of them. Uh, um... I do enjoy some of Vince Vaughn's movies, but man, that guy phoned it in. He's, <laughs> he's done for. Vince uh, Vaughn, he phoned it in. Who's the one I like? Who's the John Favre? Favre. John Favre. Favre. That guy's great behind the camera. Don't put your ugly face on screen, though. <laughs> it's, it, it was really he's good in the swingers. Yeah, he was good in swingers. Anyway, we weren't we weren't ready for that experiment, so maybe that'll be next time. Yeah, next Overrated time. Overrated and. Terrible actors. Have we done overrated actors, sir? No. Overrated? Uh, well, we will. We'll, we'll segue. Segue. All right. Cool. Thank you. This has been Talking Movies. Make sure and check out Foreplay at Boonies, March 23rd. 4th. March 24th, Sunday night, 5 p.m. Doors Be at there. 4. Do doors at 4. It's for a good cause. Center for Human Equality. Thank you.